Happy Wednesday, the first one of the season. Wednesday. 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 Is it winning Wednesday? It was or great. We, we called it both. I had winning Wednesday, and then you called it Wednesday, and I like had to go back and look and feel like asking. Hey, we're still getting used to it, but this yeah. is one of many, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes, we'll work on it. We'll um, yeah, we'll get there. we'll workshop it here internally <laughs> and try to come to a consensus. But it's Wednesday, win- winning Wednesday. What have you? It's a victory. Yeah, it's three points, gentlemen. Three points. Yeah. So welcome, to scarves and spikes. Huge episode today. We got to talk about again the first win against New England. We got Taylor Twelman coming on. Uh, he just had a great video about how great Atlanta was, so I'm sure we'll talk about that. We got to talk about Orlando because that's coming up on Sunday. Big game there, Orlando. and yeah, it's it's exciting. Yeah, Orlando, it's that Orlando <laughs> week. Orlando, but, by the way, are on a really bad turn of four. Four winless in their last four matches. Three losses, a draw. They got hammered by Tigres on Tuesday night in Champions League or Champions Cup. And their Champions Cup is O-V-E-R. So they got that going. Uh, they got some stuff to work out, guys. So Over. Oh, okay. I get it. Over. Uh, I had to think about it for a minute. <laughs> I just um, got to say, complete. it's a good day for an Atlanta fan when you wake up the next morning. Philly got destroyed. Orlando Ooh. got destroyed. Jeez. I mean, aggregate ten to two <laughs> between them. That's wild. Uh, that's hot. It. <laughs> that's real hot. I love it. <laughs> well, uh, as always, follow us on Scarves and Spikes. Uh, our Patreon, patreon.com backslash scarves and spikes. Doing a lot of fun things there. These guys are going to training, getting out reports early, could hear some audio, uh, access to our Discord. We're going to be doing some watch alongs, uh, a little bit of everything. But before we get started, oh, we have a giveaway to announce at the end of this. So stay tuned. We'll be announcing a giveaway. I'm excited. But first, before we get started about New England, I think we got to take a minute uh, for some thank yous because. Yes. This weekend was just awesome. Uh, first off, thank you to Signia Hotel for having us. Um, it was a great time, great venue, cool Halo board. I just trying to guess how much it, it cost. I, you know, I don't want to be like that old guy that like walks into a restaurant. And go, how much was that Halo board up right. there? <laughs> We're gonna put one in. But it house? was awesome. Yeah, in your man cave. I was thinking so. I mean, I have I have a pretty <laughs> high uh, ceiling there. But yeah, thank you to Signia. Um, but most of all, thank you to everybody um, that showed up, um, come hung out with us, talked to us. Uh, you know, even people at the game came and stopped by and you know said, hey, we love the show. We love everything that you do. And uh, we had so much fun doing it. And we get to meet all of you. And I tell you guys, within five minutes of sitting at the bar, I had three berry three berry lines like just attack sean greg oh, matt everybody good. brought up barry like someone's just like i think we're gonna have a very good time here and then my <laughs> wife looked over and she's like does everybody troll you like no matter where you are whether you're in ohio <laughs> or atlanta and i said that's just i guess it's what I, I i push off on people right it's like you have a sign on you tommy saying troll me about miguel barry <laughs> yeah i yeah, got I it I, I i got it hard yeah I'm dropping a what dollar you got? In the tip jar, by the way. Oh, did he say? Oh, I said, Barry. I said the name, who, the person, whatever. He who shall not be named. Is that yeah, what we're calling we have, we have a lot of those. Yeah. We do. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but I, cool. no, yeah, I just echoed Tommy. Thanks so much. You know, it's a lot of fun. First with Manny, you know, we'll announce more as the season progresses. You know, we got She Believes Cup coming up. So we'll be. Uh, that direction more to come on that by a shout out to jason longsword and jessica Sharman. they're gonna be calling that night tonight the game here in atlanta so props to them they got a busy day by the way they're longshore is going to um new york city and jess is going to i think charlotte, charlotte. yeah back, back to charlotte their match so they got a long day but shout out to them uh, excited to he- hear that uh but no thanks again um We'll keep you guys posted on that whenever we do it next, whether it's at Nest on 4, whether it's at you know, breweries or watch parties, 
away game, watch parties, things like that. But thanks a lot. Really appreciate you. And you guys are why we do it. And we want to keep doing it for you. So, And you don't have to wait for us to go to that bar. The Nest on Four is open. It's a sports bar. It's open to the public. You don't. It's not just game days. If you're at the Benz for any other home game or any other event, or you're just in Atlanta and you want to go hang out and have a really cool view of the Benz, go there and get a drink. Go hang out. It's it's a really neat place. So if you didn't show up, you missed out. You missed out. FOMO. <laughs> um, come back next time. She believes Scott. But just go. Give it a, give it a shot. It's a really really neat place, and we we truly appreciate. Uh, yeah. them hosting the show it was awesome yeah. yeah and just one thing i i was thinking about this as i got back to the hotel at one in the morning and had <laughs> basically got two hours of sleep before i get to the airport uh you know back in the playoffs i i ran into doug we were sitting at a table before the game, game one started and he asked me what is success to scarves and spikes and it really caught me off guard i didn't think anybody would ask me that you know especially just there and that's like a you know, at the at the yeah, like at the time, I was like, oh, you know, increase YouTube views and increase our Patreon. And as I laid down in the bed and I just did a big like huff, I just like, wow, this this was a day. But like yeah. I realized at that point, it was like, this is this is why, because, right. you know, we're interactive. Right. I mean, we've always we've done the the spaces. We do this. Uh, we do the Patreon, the Discord and all that. But then getting to meet everybody and then like them just like, you know, just talking about how they like it and why they like it. It was yeah. it, that was pretty cool. I think the line was someone said, "Is you guys don't take yourselves seriously, and that's why we like you." Yeah, I think that's a compliment because at first I was like, no. "Is he talking trash about us?" And I was like, "No, you know what? That's actually a pretty damn good thing, right?" Yeah. Like you guys joke around too much. <laughs> hey, you, we can't. You can't be Walter Cronkite up here reading the right. news in the evening. You got to make it fun, and we try to have fun. Um, sports are fun. I hate to break it to y'all, but sports are a good time. And so we didn't want to get up here and try to make this boring. Obviously, we want y'all to come and enjoy it. Hang out and have a drink. Chill with us. Talk yeah. crap a little bit. We, we go. Oh, yeah, we, uh, yeah. damn it. All right. <laughs> anyway. uh, one last one last thing. Uh, congratulations to the Gulch and all the supporters groups. I spent some time down there and I was I was told the story like four different from four different people about the pressure that they had for the last two weeks to get to a lot, which is still the original. This still the lot from last season, but they had a hell of a time dealing with that entire situation. So congratulations to them that they were able to tailgate, have a good time, and they're signed up for the whole year. So they're ready to go. So, so congratulations to them. Yeah. And awesome. Team four to one. one. Awesome. Team yeah. Show, by the way. Fantastic. Yeah, really I, I had to Google it. I, I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> Me too. Me too, to be honest with you. I mean, if been I mean had y'all looked years. at the tweet from your own account, it oh, would have had the whole history okay. there. Tyler, whatever. I'm just, just saying. Enjoying the moment. I mean, over, but, but you Googled it? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, at that point, I didn't think go to Scarves and Spikes for the explanation of the TIFO. Oh, and and this, that was the thing. This is your number one source for Atlanta United coverage. What are you talking about, Tommy? All right, nerd, quiet. And, and Thomas Spence, he was watching the game from the, you know, from his seat. So yeah, he you know, he's fixing it on the field. Saying. So we'll we'll give him a pass. I love that picture of me, uh, the video when they called the penalty. <laughs> My arms are up in the air because I, I knew it was a penalty. I saw it. I saw it. It was there. Good shout. Good shout. Uh, but yeah, four to one. You know, I I, did, I expect I, I my prediction was three to one, right? And I think we all predicted a win, and started off slow, right? A little slow. Um, you know, MVP of the first half was obviously the crossbar, because yes. we've said before when the other team goes up one nothing, you're usually in trouble, right? The Benz they stop wanting to play, but then Atlanta gets the penalty scores and then it's just onward right it's just to infinity and beyond yakamakis takes over the game first career hat trick for atlanta united who would have who would have predicted that that would have happened this guy this guy right here thank you yakamakis good job but yeah what'd you guys think of the game i'm sorry i got like a like a pitch invader outside my window so a what Pitch invade. I don't know. There's like some some random person walking around my driveway right now. <laughs> this is the way that this show is back to go. Google. Back to Google <laughs> to see oh, oh, what is it? A 
pitch a invader? whale? You don't know what a pitch invader is? Like you a keep s- well, you, have, you have someone naked outside your window? No, no, no. They're not naked. I'm just trying to figure out why they're hanging out my driveway. Okay, they're gone. A pitch. Oh, I thought it was like a. I thought it was like a bird or like a. I thought you said pitch whale. And I'm no. like, wow, you guys have some weird, weird ass birds in in, yes, in Georgia. I'll just shut up. You talk, <laughs> Sydney. Go ahead. Give your thoughts on the game. This I'm is why we don't take ourselves seriously because I'm talking. You're right. talking about streaking people in your window. <laughs> well, speaking of streak, hopefully Atlanta can start a streak. <laughs> Jesus! Oh my God! Ten minutes in, and we're already wow. That was that was that was amazing. That that was smooth. God, appreciate it. (laughs) Here all week, no, but this was a good start. Um, We knew that at Lady Night. We talked about it on Saturday. You can't lose your home opener, not with sixty nine thousand fans or sixty seven, sixty eight thousand fans. The best, whatever it was. you can't afford a letdown in front of your home fans. You want to make Mercedes-Benz Stadium a fortress. Uh, Sasha Kleshin mentioned it you know, on the last show. You, you can't lose home games. You got to make your stadium a place where it is tough for other teams to play. And we saw that on Saturday. Yes, a little, it was a little bit slow. That's something that Yakimakis maybe hinted at a little bit after the match in the locker room. You know, it wasn't perfect. There's some things that they have to go in and take a look at in training on the training grounds and correct it. You know, take a look at video, just as Yakimaka said, just seeing where they went wrong. It, but yeah, it, Pineda has kind of set a just like a high standard for this team. 2024. He he said he was upset about the goal that he'll give up. And we said it before. Heel is going to get his more often than not. They don't want a shutout or a clean sheet. And well, you thought they'd get one, but you know, unfortunately, you know, a little breakdown of the fence. But I mean, other than that, I mean, could he have asked for anything more? Yakimaka's hat trick. Um, you got a couple of penalty calls. By the way, Yakimaka's perfect hat trick. Right foot, left foot header. And what a goal the third one was. What a goal the second one was to a great bullet from the back. But this is the start that Atlanta United needed. You know, a very low drama start. You didn't need two Galazzos from Almada to win the match, although you'd like that for entertainment value. But you're able to go in, come out, and really like, have your heart racing because you're just afraid the team was going to lose the match. So it's a strong stake in the ground for the next, hopefully, 32 matches plus for this club. And Hopefully it continues against Orlando. Like I said at the top, Orlando has been in rough form. Winless in its last four. Got blown out by Orlando or blown out by Miami in the MLS play. Led in the very, very late winner uh from Juan Juan Bangi um uh, against Minnesota on Saturday night. Um got blown up by Tigress on Tuesday night in Champions Cup. So they are going to be coming in desperate, and Atlanta United needs to just continue to add to that misery. Yeah. I You wanted a dominant win, right? That's ultimately what you wanted to start the season off with at home. You have to win. Tommy, you were, you were or Sydney, you were talking about what Sasha said in the last episode, but it, it rings true, especially in MLS. You have to win your home games. You have to win your home games, and you've got to start getting results on the road. You shouldn't be disgruntled or discouraged about the Columbus match. That's one of your hardest opponents that you were going to play this year, and that's okay. You turned around. You had a two-week break. You turned around. You had a little bit of rust in the first half. That's going to happen with any team. You, you had this choppy start to the season, and Atlanta comes out, and it's not that they weren't creating chances. They just were very unclinical and they looked rusty, but then new England looked tired and looked dead. And yeah, the crossbar, thank God, thank God it was at that height because the game would have been changed in the, whatever that was 25th minute or so, but the defense held strong. They bent, thankfully didn't break. 
and then you, you get the penalty and then that changes the entire game. You come out in the second half and you look like a completely dominant team and you just look like the better team. So I think there's a lot to build on. You know, one of the things that was mentioned this week from Pineda and really the players in general was just like, yeah, I mean, it was great, but there's still things to, to improve. It's, it wasn't perfect. And I think a fan could look at the game and say, oh, no, it wasn't perfect. It was great. 4-1 win, take it any day of the week. But you've still got some little fine-tuning things to do. And I think one of the, the focuses that's been such a big deal this year early already has been that the players and the team, they want to look inward. They want to focus inward. I wrote an article about it up on scarversandspikes.com today, but just, you know, they, they want to focus on themselves, the things that they can control and try to improve the things that they can control because they know their identity. They know what they want to do. You just have to go out there and make sure you can implement it and execute it against every team that you play against. And they did it against New England. And you have to hope that they can do it again uh, on Sunday against Orlando. But I liked what I saw. I think it was great. And I see people asking in the chat, by the way. That's what I saw outside my window, Tommy. <laughs> There's your pitch. Scary. We'll explain it for the podcast listeners, though. <laughs> It's all right. Well, it, it's a Pokemon, I think. <laughs> it's a whale a, sitting on a soccer pitch, and part of it looks like a soccer ball. And that's where we're at. Pikes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and if anybody hasn't had a chance to see it, go to Scarves and Spikes because Tyler has gone AI crazy. <laughs> and he, he posts I, this is his thing, I guess, after a win. He's going to find pictures on AI and these things as you stare at them more things pop out at you but the first one is none of these things have eyes and when you look at this at four in the morning when you don't have much sleep you think that it's a demon looking at you and that the picture is coming alive and that was that was that was a traumatizing picture and then you find out that the one guy for some reason has three arms how'd that happen I don't know and then punching yeah. it one was punching a dog uh it it was it was it was interesting. So we need to keep you out, out of out of the AI. Yeah, use yeah, it for yeah. good. So yeah, by, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to use it for good. I used it. This is how the Terminator it. started. <laughs> I, it still can't draw hands. I think we're okay. It can't even spell right. I think we're good yeah, for right. a few years. At least for a couple more years. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is about this game is you could you could see that there's so many areas for improvement, right? And you could tell that these guys are trying to get used to each other. And I think I mentioned it on our ratings episode, but like Gregerson early on, he had some real bad passes early on in the game. And it seemed like he grew into it. But like as the game's going on, you could tell that Yakamakis and Lennon are telling him, this is where I want it. This is where I want the ball. Pass here. This is going to come. This is game two. This was what, game six or seven for New England? I think it was seven. And that's... I believe so. I mean, it's up there. Yeah. I mean, they had Champions League, right? I mean, they had they had Champions League. They didn't have the bye week. So, yeah, they've they've had a lot of games that they've, they've been playing. And the same situation is going to be with Orlando. They've got a ton of games in them, too. So, what do we say? What was going to win? Was it, the, was it the cohesion that Orlando was hoping to have? Was that going to win the game? Or was it going to be Atlanta, who was maybe a little inexperienced with each other, um, but is fresh, right? They were the fresh legs. And we saw what won. And now we're going into this game for still fresh legs. And now we're a little bit more, uh, a little bit more in sync. Edgar saying in the chat, I know it's early, but I'm happy that Guzan is the starter. This new team plus this knowledge and leadership will lead us far. That's the hope with Guzan. That's I mean, he, the two, two goals that Atlanta United have gave up the one against Columbus, the one against new England. You don't, I don't put that on him. You can't put um, that on him. You can't put that on him. That's just breakdowns of defense and you get away with it a little bit more because you have the big lead. But still, just he demands so much from his team. You know, he's a he took it personal that he lost a clean sheet. And again, Panetta was upset that you know they lost a clean sheet at the end. But he he made some really he says he made some good stops throughout the night. I mean, granted, New New England weren't the biggest threat to goal 
on Saturday night, but he made some key saves and you know, the defense was strong and organized with him back there. And yeah, you got three points again, but you hope that it continues. You hope that the season goes on, you know, as matches start to stack up. Unfortunately, Atlanta don't have Champions Cup or anything like that to deal with. I mean, you want to get to Champions Cup, but they don't have the fixer congestion that maybe uh, Orlando or New England have right now. But then you have US Open Cup coming up as well. That'll kind of throw a wrench into the eggs just a little bit. So as the matches stack up, how does Guzan kind of hold up? And really, how do the other players hold up uh, throughout the season? So yeah, a couple of strong matches from Guzan. Uh, well rated. I rate him pretty highly. Um, at least his first couple of matches and really again the two goals that he gave up not his fault yeah he just looks I, I thought it was good yeah I, he he to me he looks i think i said it last week or maybe on the ratings episode or something i don't know he looks springy he looks spry he looks fresh i, I really do think that the off season was what he needed because i mean you go back last year right you had the injury up in new york and it, he came back very quickly from that. Very, very quickly. Like, I don't understand how a human rebounds that quickly from that kind of injury. And yet Brad Guzan did. But this year, it's just, he seems quicker. He seems a little bit more agile. And yeah, it, it's totally in his, his hands right now to lose that job. Now, yeah, Open Cup comes around. You got Josh Cohen waiting. I mean, you're not looking at a downgrade there. That's that's yeah. great to have Josh Cohen waiting in the wings to play in, in whatever match he's called up for. Dude, that's perfect. That is perfect for Atlanta. And I'm just I'm I'm excited to see him get on the pitch as well, but I'm not taking Brad Guzan off anytime soon if he continues to play like he's playing. Yeah, unless like Cohen is shockingly bad, which I don't think he is, based on what we saw with him in preseason, based on what we've seen with him um with Maccabi Haifa. Yeah, I don't think I'll be worried. You and, know. Yeah, and just to piggyback on that, like what Matt's saying, I'm sure having Cohen breathing down his neck is a little extra yeah. motivation for Goose because Goose is that kind of guy. He wants he he's competitive. He yeah. wants to be there, and having somebody pushing him. I don't think he's had that in prior seasons. Not it's not a knock on Quentin Westberg or you know Clement Diop or. Rocco Rios Novo or anybody that's been there in between the sticks over the past couple of seasons. It's just how it is. I mean, Josh Cohen is just a really good goalkeeper. And so he's going to push Brad. I think your goalkeeping situation is about as good as it's been since ever. Really, this, yeah. Since he has been around, I mean, you had Khan. Um, he's good. Waiting. Yeah. yeah. He, Kyle was very good while well, you had Gazan. Wait on Gazan to come over from England. But since then, you haven't really had a strong um, one-two in that. And you get that with Guzan, and you get that with Cohen. There's Sure, there's maybe a little bit of a drop-off between him and Cohen, but not noticeable enough that I think Atlanta United will be you know, in serious trouble. Again, Tyler, like you were saying, not to you know, knock Westbird, not to knock Dio, but yeah, you're in a really, you're really good spot, you know, Knock on wood, should something happen to you, Zan. So. Knock on wood. There it is. Well. What's wrong, Tommy? <laughs> I just, you guys and your knock on wood. It's a. Uh, it worked. something. Gotta be, gotta be prepared, though. I Y'all got so angry at me the other day about what I said, and I knocked on wood, and what did, what did Gigi go and do? <laughs> sure. I'm just saying. Should do it more. One of the questions we asked at the at the live at the live show was for some participation from the crowd. Guzan or Cohen? What'd you say we got? Maybe 60-40 or 70-30? Yeah. But it was it was towards Cohen. Yeah. The fans want Cohen. But you're not gonna get him. You're no. not gonna get him anytime soon. <laughs> let's let's relax. Relax. Unless Guzan I said it last week, I think. Unless Guzan just his form just dips sharply, like it completely falls off a cliff. I don't think Panetta is going to make that move. I think it's Gazan, unless proven otherwise. The fans may want Cohen, but yeah, Gazan has a little bit left in the tank, you would hope. So 
I got I got I know we have Taylor coming on in a minute. Can we just talk about the third goal for a minute? That third goal was a thing of beauty. And if you haven't if you haven't gone back and just watched the whole thing, just go watch it because it was very very well executed by Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And we talk on this show, every pundit journalist for around Atlanta and for MLS everywhere else it talks about Atlanta's tactics and everything. You know, we've we've given Pineda some some, you know, not I don't want to say hate, but whatever you want to call it, some criticism, I guess. Deserved at times. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um but then you go and you see something like what happened Saturday. And I remember going back a couple of years ago and everybody's like, why are we playing out of the back? Why are we making ourselves play out of the back? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? And one of the things we consistently said was if, if it works, it is a thing of beauty and it is very, very tough to defend. That's what some of the best coaches, some of the best teams in history have done. You get a team with a talent that can do what they did on that third goal. And, and you're, you're going a long way. Now, it's one goal, but that goal was beautiful to, to play out of that corner, to play through pressure for Derek Williams, a guy that, that came in right on the re-entry draft. <laughs> Edgar saying Henry is the ATL McLevin. Henry, we love you, buddy. Um, but to, to have a guy like Derek come in with that experience, Aston Villa Academy, you know, everything else played in, in MLS for a long time. And, help orchestrate that play through that and then make that pass forward, break the lines and open up all that space. And then for Lennon to go and put that dime of a ball for Yakamakis. I mean, that was, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. And then Yakamakis does what he does, right? He, he is a murderer in the box. I just, you got to respect that that whole goal, that whole team goal. It was awesome. It was fun to watch. I hope we see a lot more of it. I'm not going to sit here and be like, "Oh, hey, it's 2018 again." But that was reminiscent of some some really fun 2018 goals. Yeah, I, I mean, I I thought the fourth goal was even more impressive. That angle that he hit it from. Yes. I mean, and man, when he celebrates, like he just looks into the crowd and he just like burns a hole through them, yeah. right? Like he's just. I'm that guy. Mm-hmm. I'm that guy. And the, the confidence level, you know, I know you don't want to put comparisons to another striker we have, but like, that's one thing that they definitely have in common is that that confidence. Uh, I think Taylor said that villain. He's uh-huh. that, he's got that villain in him. Yeah. And yeah, he, to us, he's our hello. hero. Are, are we, are we the bad guys? Are we the ones that root for the villains? Like if you watch the boys, <laughs> like all the villains are you know, the bad guys and we're the, we're rooting for the bad guys. I don't know. Ask Taylor that in a minute when he gets on. So yeah, that's that's how that's how Yakimakis came in though, right? He said, you know, you're gonna you have to go with my name, don't worry, you're gonna remember it by the end of the season. And so far, he's paid off. Only the fifth player in MLS history, guys, to score twenty regular season goals in fewer than two thousand regular season minutes. Just a short list of players that have accomplished what he's accomplished. In such a short period of time, and I was talking about it with Jarrett Smith from Soccer Down Here. It's a big Celtic fan. He he wore number seven at Celtic, who belonged to Hendrik Nielsen, one of their best ever strikers. He invited that pressure on himself, and the same thing with Atlanta United. You know, he said, "You know, I invite that pressure on myself. No, I'm not afraid of the pressure." Yeah, you know, I asked him in the locker room. I said, "You know, you scored three goals, and you talked to Brady Wright Phillips." Last year, you want to win the Golden Boot. I mean, do you feel like you um, sent a message to the league that this could be yours to lose? He said, I, I don't need to send a message. You know, I they already don't know who I am. I've already made a name for myself in this league. And one of the days we can ask Taylor is, you know, do we think Yakamakis can win the Golden Boot? Not only that, but could he challenge for Velas? 34 goal regular season record is going to be tough because, right, he could be going away to um, Euros, could be, plus he'll miss a match or two due to um, their Euro qualifying if they win their first match and move on to the second match. But it, you know, 
you, you, I wouldn't say no at this point. It's going to be tough, but I, I wouldn't say no. Like, he has this ruthlessness to him, and Dan saying in the chat, he has to acknowledge me vibe. He definitely does, and yeah, I, I wouldn't bet against him winning the Golden Boot at the very least in 2024. Yeah. Um, one one uh, comment that popped up from David, because this, this came up to me, my family said this actually too, but David saying I was excited for the 2-0 lead, but I was just begging for a real goal. And Yakamakis answered that twice for me. I think sometimes you you watch a game, right? And and first of all, for Atlanta to have one more penalty scored <laughs> in this game that yeah. they had all season last year is wild. <laughs> but sometimes, I mean, you, you have a game, three points or three points, I don't care. But it's it sometimes feel a little feels a little cheap when you win a game just on penalties, right? Just just because you happen to you know, get fouled in the box and then your yeah. striker whoever converts. And it's like, all right, cool. But I want, I want some team goals. I want some open play goals. And I will always take the three points over me complaining about that. But I just, you want to see your team do team things. And so I totally get that. I totally get what, what David's saying. Like you want to go into a game with your your striker doing his job with your attacking midfielder doing his job with your wingers doing their job and then come out of it on the other side with three points because they all work together and yeah i mean in that first half it was like oh, man like this is just not it's not connecting right and then they come out in the, the second half and it's like whoa <laughs> where, where, what team talk yeah. did y'all have in the locker room because y'all unlocked something just like you did against columbus you just weren't lucky enough to convert against columbus and and at least draw then you ran riot all over New England, and right. know, hopefully we see a lot more of it this year. I think it was just the confidence that Lenny had coming out of the locker room, coupled with New England again, the heavily compressed match schedule. It's kind of like the perfect storm. And granted, you know, they got another penalty. I think that second penalty just kind of gave them that boost they needed to you know, continue on and just really stack up the goals. But yeah, second goal, or third goal is terrific. Fourth goal was terrific as well um just the degree of difficulty just really the audacity to take that shot from there and yeah i mean because they said locker room yeah <laughs> i think it's kind of joking you know yakamakis could have had more than that i was kind of hoping to get a fourth i mean lady knight's never had a four goal scorer in the match um so hopefully that happens sooner or later Hopefully it happens this year. How many penalties did we get last season? I mean, it had to be less than five, right? I I don't remember. I remember the home opener. Reed. Arruju had one. Yeah, he skied that one. And then you had the oh, one yeah, on missed, and he hit on the rebound. So that was the one, that he, another one that was missed. And then you had Almada. Missed one in Nashville. One. No, Almada scored the one in Nashville. Did he? Yeah. Okay. I think that was the only one that was scored last year. <laughs> we got it two on one night. Right. We're living, yeah. baby. <laughs> yeah. <that>. Two. <laughs> I got. I kind of agree with what Tyler was saying. Like you know, you know. I mean, yeah. Penalties are good. I mean, you want to score from the spot every time, but at the same time, you know, give me some open play goals. Give me some goals with the run of play because you could be like. I say like seventy percent, half can see seventy percent possession in a nil nil match. Draw a penalty and win one nil. I mean, it's three points, just the same, but it's just boring. It's just I don't want to talk about it too much, but you know, it's just kind of is what it is. So, hopefully, more goals like that, like goal three, goal four, like we saw on Saturday. I'll take any win. I don't care. I, mean, yeah. I don't care if it's a penalty. I'm not complaining about wins, but guess you what I'm saying. <laughs> anything. I'll take anything. Yeah. I will take anything. All right. Well, our guest is here. Two time guest on the call with Jake Zivin. As last week as well, this is two time Taylor Twelman. Oh, oh. No. Taylor, how's it going? What's going on, Taylor? What's up, boys? How are you? Doing well. 
Well, well thanks for uh, coming back with us. No problem. What's going on? We're still living, celebrating the win. Living the dream. <laughs> As you should be. What a yeah. game. <laughs> it, it was something. But, Taylor, this is two times, back-to-back games, that you are going to be doing an Atlanta United game. Are you afraid you're going to be now the Yakamakis announcer? Because all I heard last season was you were the Messi announcer. <laughs> Well, it's nice of Messi to let me um, go do other games. I would say that. So I appreciate that. I will be in D.C. Saturday afternoon for D.C. United and Miami, and then I'll be on a plane to Atlanta. So uh, uh, honestly, it's um, I don't mind doing the double headers if I can fit it in. Uh, I get a little taste of everything. The messy games away are really special. Those are cool. You know, Miami home crowd, it's a little different now. It's not the same. Um, but the away games are always something special. And then obviously what you guys do against Orlando City should be great. We hope. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're, Last time we oh, – go, go ahead, Tommy. I'm sorry. I'm talking a little over you. Well, go right ahead. No, I was going to say, so I, I, I spent my drive in into work today to listen to last time you were on Mm -hmm. and uh, i had a little ptsd throughout it because most of the time we talked about joseph martinez it was the first game uh joseph martinez was there we talked about aruju and how he was going to be he had to be the x factor for atlanta uh i I wanted i had to go i had to stop at work and and grab a drink after that after listening to that entire conversation because that didn't work out too well nope and then miles robinson you know, mm-hmm. you mentioned losing Miles Robinson on a free could be devastating for Atlanta United. Atlanta United loses Miles Robinson for nothing. Doesn't even leave MLS, goes to Cincinnati. But Atlanta goes and revamps their entire defense, right? Gregerson, mm-hmm. Williams, Sleesh. Put that all together. How do you think Atlanta United's offseason has gone with the defense? Hmm. So I think it's a little disingenuous to put Schleich in the quote-unquote defensive department in the conversation with Miles Robinson. However, uh, I will answer that because I do like his signing. Um, I think this is the most balanced team that Atlanta's had since probably 19. Um, I think you've got the special player in Almada different than Al Marone, but the same kind of uh, end quality, so to speak. You've got Yakumakis wearing number seven. There was another guy that wore seven at that time. <laughs> um, different players, but the same kind of player that can put the ball in the back of the net. But now you've got a balanced midfield. You know, last year when I talked to you guys, you guys had four of the same center midfielders. Quite honestly, it's eerily similar to what the Revolution had last weekend. Harks, Polster, K. They're all kind of the same player, Buck as well. So that was kind of what you guys were. Schleich is now a game changer for you guys. He's a six. He's a destroyer. That's, that is what he is. Miyumba becomes a little bit of a different player, um, allowed to go forward. Um, so I like this. I don't know the answer to that question on your back line yet. I don't. And I'll be honest. I, I don't know – if I see the center backs and Williams and Gregerson being the couple, uh, being the pairing that you guys need, it wouldn't surprise me if Oscar, per, uh, Oscar, per, excuse me, Gonzalo Pineda goes to three in the back, maybe, um, depending on who's available. So I, I don't know that answer. I'll be honest with you. I don't know if we should know that answer by now, but since I did last weekend, you guys will probably agree with me. First 45 minutes, minutes wasn't great. So, you know, the second half was fantastic. It was a show, all of that. But the first 45, the revolution did everything right. And then the penalty happened. So, you know, it's celebrated, but I would still be a little cautious in knowing the best 11 yet. I don't know if Gonzo knows that yet. I think it's it's interesting because Slish has been the guy I think everybody in Atlanta has wanted. Mm -hmm. for a couple of years now and obviously you have a high expectations but you know coming into atlanta coming into mls coming into a new league in general and when we first saw him he in the preseason now granted it's preseason but he was a little slow to kind of get started 
And then against Columbus, he was, he had a, maybe a tough first half. The whole team did, but then he kind of figured it out. And, you know, when we talk about the defense for Atlanta, correct me if I'm wrong, you, from, from your vantage point, being the, the lead analyst and everything, what we were missing last year was that defensive midfielder that just would stop the the late runs in the box. You had so many goals scored last season from guys that just nobody picked them up. They would appear at the top of the box, ball gets played to them, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're you're looking at you're down one nil or whatever. Um, where did, what what do you have to have as a as an attacker to play through that, doing what you did? Um, and what does a defense have to do to try to, um, I guess shore up what went wrong in Atlanta last year? Well, two things went wrong last year. You did not have the right mix of center midfielders to play in the system. And I'll go back to the game at Inter-Miami where Inter-Miami played them off. Listen, I don't think it's a talent issue. Like, I really liked Sosa. Sosa had a lot of talent. But it didn't fit here for many reasons. But that doesn't mean Sosa, who, by the way, is balling right now, that doesn't mean he didn't have any talent. When you're in the midfield, you got to have the right balance. 2018, MLS Cup, Gressel, Nagby, Remedy. All three different players. All three give you a little something different. So I, I, you just, the team last year needed someone who was like, no, hang on a minute. I'm going to defend. I'm going to read the game. I'm going to put out fires. I'm going to get the ball moving. I'm going to play quickly. That's what I'm going to do. Now, Muyomba came here and did a little bit of that at the end of the year. But you guys gave up more goals than anyone in the playoffs. So no matter what happened at the end of the year, it still happened, right? You still gave up a ton of goals. I think, and I agree with you, I thought the first half against Columbus, Schleich looked out of it. I thought the first half against New England, he kind of was better, but not totally. And yet a positive sign for me is both second halves were better from him. I think it's going to take him two or three months to really get a grip on it. But he's young. He's got legs. Um, I just like this team. My nervousness is, to answer your question further on the attack, Silva's got to be very, very efficient. He looks the part. He is the part. But he's got to be clinical. I know that Soba's going to finish if he gets an opportunity. He showed that last year. Sean Day looks like someone that when he's in it, and I mean in it and getting chances and doing everything, he's a world beater. Mm -hmm. But there's also 75 minutes where I don't even see him. They can't afford that from him. Um, but I think the balance in the midfield helps. The second point to answer your question is, Miles Robinson, as good as a one-on-one -on -one defender as he was, and Joseph Martinez said he was the most difficult defender he had to play against. And that was because every day in training, he thought he had by him and didn't. He defended well, always there. The problem with Miles in the part of the evolution, which is part of the reason why the Premier League teams didn't come after him, he's an old-fashioned defender. He will mark you, man-mark you, and, and I mean this. He can man-mark anyone in the world. Nobody gets by him, but does he read the game? Does he read what happens to others? So while Gregerson and Williams may not be on par with, well, I know they aren't, collectively they may be better with a six in front of that. So that's why I'm intrigued to see how Atlanta plays this year, what they look like. Um, and they need to be dominant at home because they're not good in the road. Gonzalo Pineda has not figured out wh what to do, how to do it on the road. But if you got if you guys win 14, 15 of 17 at home, then you're cooking with gas. So I, I think home field is a big part of that. Um, and I just don't know if this team will give up the same amount of goals as it did last year. And I think a large part just because everyone is a square peg in a square hole and it's no longer misfits. It just feels different, I think. And it's two games in. I get that it's two games in, but the vibe seemed there. The chemistry seems there. And you talked about winning at home and you, you made Atlanta fans really happy this week, by the way, <laughs> on your podcast. Um, so could you just talk about the atmosphere for a minute? Uh, just talk about kind of what it was that you saw. I mean, 
we we do I think maybe take it for granted sometimes. But I take it for granted. Um, listen, yeah. I was the first person that was very skeptical of Atlanta. Listen, I grew up in St. Louis, and the only time the Atlanta Braves sold out was the eleven division titles they had, and they would sell out in the playoffs in the World Series. And I coming from St. Louis, St. Louis Cardinals, we sold out every game. It didn't matter if you were playing the Pirates or it didn't matter if you were playing the Cubs. And so for someone that grew up in St. Louis to understand what Atlanta and Georgia soccer market, I was skeptical. Uh, no, didn't even shy away from it. Was all over ESPN saying, I, I just don't know. Arthur Blank on day one, it wasn't Falcons is 1A and Atlanta United's 1B, it wasn't. They were both 1A. And when I heard that about five, six months after them getting up, get it running, I was like, this, I, I could be wrong on this. Um, I completely underestimated the education in that market of the fan. Uh, it's college football country. I'm not, no one's going to deny that, argue that with me. Um, but the eclectic group of people, the diverse amount of people, uh, the way they see the game, the way they absorb the game. I just, hey, listen, I was wrong on Atlanta. What I am scared of, and this reminded me Sunday night was, I'm doing an MLS game and there's 68,000 people here. And I just think I needed to use my platform to remind people like, what the hell is going on right now? 68,000 are watching an MLS game. <laughs> and I go through the list that's fourth or fifth in the world. Yeah. And yet we kind of just look at it and go, yeah, it's Atlanta. It's what they do. So that's why I did that message. Um, it's always special. I think. Where you guys as a fan base won me is not when you were playing well. It's when you were playing poorly because I felt it. Yeah. Now, do I think the players would disagree with me? Yeah, the players would probably want you to be as loud as possible the entire time. But I felt the anxiety. I felt the angst. I felt the, ugh, what is this? You know what I mean? And, and, and a lot of people will say, Atlanta was spoiled from day one. Okay, fine, sure, but we're spoiled for Atlanta. So it's you know what I mean. You can both aren't mutually exclusive. You can have both. I think the way Tata Martino, Joseph Martinez, Miguel Amron, and that team came into Major League Soccer immediately, it was a show. So it got your attention. To think that Frank DeBoer and the Atlanta United team was the best home team in the Eastern Conference that year, we all forget that, right? So. Um, it's a long winded answer of me just saying, thank you. Thank you to Atlanta for proving me wrong as a market, but thank you that I get the opportunity to go to games and 40,000 people is a, eh, wasn't that great. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. what a gift. Yeah. It really is a yeah. gift. And that's, that's, I think the, the biggest message for me out of that for sure was, it was just, um, we go week in and week out. Right. And even through the the Joseph ACL years and the, you know, the other things that we won't talk about right now, Kubo Torres and, and, and some of those guys, are just <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, um, everybody was there, you know, and it was, it was really cool to see. Oh, it's just, it's fun. And to, to cap it off, you got to have a villain. You got to have someone that loves it. And my interview with Yako Marcus after the game on Apple TV, guys, you've got that guy. You've got that. I mean, he yeah. stepped up and said, give me number seven. Yeah. He's not scared, and if it, just coming from someone that loved to score goals, there's nothing better than knowing you got sixty eight thousand behind you that will do anything and everything to celebrate that goal. I just, I, I think we're gonna, I think we're in for a fun ride in twenty twenty four. I know it's early, but I think I'm gonna be in Atlanta a lot, and I, f I feel like Atlanta's gonna want me there because that means the games are big. You yeah, talk about a villain though. Oh, so, sorry, one second, uh, Sydney. You talk about a villain, but then also he's got he's got a heart of gold. And the playoff game last year, Silva misses a, a wide open net. And what's he do? He puts his arm around him, just walks, starts walking up the field with him, and then he starts getting the crowd into him. And you know now Silva's you know flying high, right? Like so he's got that heart of gold too. And I, Joseph had that at moments too. But you know, some of the similarities with them are just so similar. Oh, this is a very similar, completely different looking players. And how they go about it, but oh boy, I think the intention, I think the energy, a lot of it's the same. Yeah, we were, we were talking before you came on, you know, 
you know, him just inviting that pressure. We talked about it with him last year, mm-hmm. with you last year. Just invite that pressure, wearing that number seven, knowing what Joseph had done with it. And I said, you know, I would have been against him winning the golden boot. Beyond that, and Vela, of course, we know broke Joseph's mm-hmm. record of single season goals. And understanding that there's a chance that Yakamakis could be at Euro should Greece qualify, but there's still a possibility that they'll be there. Could he get to 34 goals? Could he challenge for that record that Vela set a couple of years back? Just what are your thoughts on that? That's an interesting one. Uh, I mean, the answer is, can he? Yes. Will he? I don't think so. And the reason why I do think Greece qualifies. I'm, I could be totally wrong on this, but yeah. I, the way that is set up for them in the playoff, I, it wouldn't surprise me. And good on him. He did, you know, to play for your country in a major tournament, why would you ever? The other part is, is that he wasn't healthy last year. He's the way his body is and the way he goes about it. I don't know if there's 30 games in him. There may be 28, but to get to that number that you want, I think he can win the golden boot. I said, if he stays healthy, he's got to be the front runner, right? But Bawanga scores goals for a living. Um, And he tied Carlos Vela's, uh, goals in a single season in all competitions last year. It's remarkable. So there's a lot of guys that can score goals, but Jakub Marcus wants to, and he knows everyone else can, and he's not shy of it. So to answer your question, can't could he? Absolutely. Will he? I don't think so, just because I do think Greece qualifies, and I also think there's going to be some level of rotation around him. He has that... You know, that physicality to him that maybe Joseph didn't have. You know, mm-hmm. that's not to say that Joseph shied away from contact, but, you know, Yakamaka definitely has that edge. He kind of alluded to it um, so much so that, you know, he's not afraid to take a knock on the field if it meets the better of the team. He's not afraid to, you know, maybe get in the player's face, not afraid to show that emotion. And, and Joseph did it, of course. I mean, but... Joseph did all those things. Yeah, absolutely. Joseph just absolutely. wasn't six two or however. Yeah, Jack exactly. Is, right? So it's a different type of presence. I know what you're yeah. trying to say. Like, I, I just feel like every time you kick Joseph Martinez, he woke up. So, like, he was <laughs> never scared of anything. It's just a different form. It's a taller, more prototypical nine. Joseph was not that. Um, and... The Almiron to Joseph is now Almada to Yako Makis, and Almada and Almiron are completely different players. So it's kind of cool to see the evolution, but they're both in the roles, in the moment, for what they stand for within the team. It's literally Batman and Robin 2.0. It's the Brooks Lennon Yako Makis connection for me. Mm-hmm. I I love what they out there at training every every time we're out there. Both of them. You got Lennon on one side, Yakamakis making runs into the box, and and Lennon has talked about how, you know, they they don't he doesn't need to pick up his head anymore. He knows where Yakamakis is going to be, and that that chemistry has been missing from this team for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, you guys were used to it for a, you know, a, a little bit of that. That was Gressel and Joseph Martinez yeah. in 2019, right? So, and, and that's what's funny about that relationship between Gressel and Martinez is we forget 17 and 18, he pretty much played as a central midfielder. You know, people forget that. That center midfield team that won MLS Cup was actually Gressel, Nagby, and Rometty. So I, I I like it. I mean, listen, Brooks Lennon knows now versus years past because of our previous conversation and our Ushu. Um, when I'm 30 yards and out, I, I know there's one guy that's going to be trying to get on the end of it. So there, you don't really need to look. Yeah, you need to pick up your head every now and then to see him, but at least you know – the presence is there. If I'm under pressure, if I whip in a good ball, he's going to be there nine out of ten times. They didn't have that the moment Joseph left. They just didn't. So one of the things you mentioned uh, last time is that you like to gamble. You're a big gambler. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so these guys told me to, to, to tell you the story here, but this guy bet Yakamakis to score a hat trick. In that game. And the odds were what? Plus 600? I bet 500 
and or no, I'm sorry, about five hundred. I bet five dollars, and I won one hundred thirty. Like, you're funding this show for like the next uh, two years. Yeah, go, no, no, no. Hundred to win what? I go. <laughs> no, I got an appearance fee for this. It's a new camera, right? <laughs> uh, but I laughed. Yeah, that was that was a moment. They were like, "Who would have thought Yakimakis would score a hat trick?" Me drinking at the airport right before I got on the airplane to Georgia. <laughs> especially especially after the first 51 minutes, it looked like one of those games where you're like, he's going to kill someone. He's missed two sitters. Mm. Yeah, yeah and usually when Yakimakis gets frustrated, he doesn't have a very good game. He struggles, yeah. right? He tries yeah. to push too hard, throws guys to the ground, and yep. then it's just a hockey game for him. Yep, this was different. So I have a quick question for you. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to talk to you after the show last time um because it's y'all did like three games you injected like three games back to back to back for atlanta last year yep um but he told me to ask you <laughs> <laughs> what what's up with the shorts what's up with the shorts there's a story apparently with wearing the, the oh, yeah. top and the and the yeah business on top 18 holes on the bottom kid hey, <laughs> Um, what's with the shorts uh, long started a long time ago, about 14 years ago. Um, I did a game in suited and booted and it was 98 degrees. And I said, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I was on camera for a total of four and a half minutes total. I'm calling a game for 98 minutes and I'm in the booth for an hour and a half for prep. I'm not, I'm not wearing pants again. I'm out. I'm out. I don't care. You don't see anything from here. Like right now, do you guys know if I have pants on or not? Do you know if any of us I, have pants on? I don't. So. <laughs> That's my point. So anyways, <laughs> that was the story. And I did it in Portland, which <laughs> me wearing <laughs> pastels, Martha's yeah. Vineyard attire in the Rose City in Portland. I mean, <laughs> if you need, if there was a drone, it would have been a real eyesore on who I was, where I was, and I had shorts on. And that got to Jake, and then Jake was like, there's no way yeah. to wear shorts. And then we had a game last year. We had a game last year, League's Cup. It was 195 degrees in Miami um, and Dallas. And I was like, no, nope, no one, no one's going to see me. Now, of course, 20 minutes before we go on air, they're like, hey, we're going to come on camera. Taylor, you're going to walk the field. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I was like, all right, I'll own it. And the camera guy did a great job. Just never showed me really below the kneecaps. <laughs> <laughs> you and Pat McAfee would get along pretty well. Yeah. No, no. I Listen, Pat McAfee. <laughs> stop, uh -oh. stop, stop belittling soccer. <laughs> you, you play, he played it at a high level, at a good level. He's doing that for cool points. It's not that cool anymore. Patrick. Uh, <laughs> call him out, Taylor. Call him out. Well, he loves hockey all of a sudden because it's on ESPN. So that, that's like his new exactly thing to talk funny. about. <laughs> Favorite golf course. Oh, God. Man, I mean, it's in your backyard and I've turned down. I've turned it down twice. Mm. Um, I got to walk it finally two years ago. In Augusta, to me, yeah. I can't. I, I walked it, and I was like, "You're an idiot!" But it was England versus Italy, Italy Euro final in twenty one. Obviously, I couldn't skip that for Augusta. And then I, um, and then my oldest was born. So, like, yeah, yeah. there you go. Um, I mean, okay. So, so I, I give you that, not because you guys are in Georgia. It has nothing to do with that. I want to play Augusta and I need to. I just yeah. don't think I'm going to get the yeah. invite again because I've already turned it down twice. Um, <laughs> Oakmont in Pittsburgh, about 45 minutes outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, my uncle played on the tour for 30 years. I don't know if you guys know that. And he's on that. some of the like youth amateur stuff. He won there. He, it's his favorite. They took down like thousands of trees and it just it's i like history to answer your question any golf course that has history i don't care if it's the most gorgeous thing in the world i, I want to play something where the caddy tells me stories every hole and i want to i want to feel the wood like i just i like history i like character in golf so that's why i would probably say oakmont they have um east lake here too in atlanta i mean yeah, the tour comes through quite often so another yeah. option for you uh i've already done it love it 
had nice. this gorgeous. Yep. But the day I played, it was 280 degrees with the humidity. So I'm yeah. not totally sure I remember the last five. Yeah. Sometime between March and November, I'm sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> I got to ask cool. Messi if I can play golf on a day off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Yakamakis. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Eventually, eventually, I can't. I, I, you guys don't even know this. I'm going to do a profile of him on, uh, on my podcast. So nice. it's going to come up. It's going to, I just, I really enjoy people that have personality on and off the field that embrace pressure. Um, I'm a big, I, I love watching him play. When awesome. can you say when? Nope. You're going to do it? Okay. Nope. Like, that's can't. okay. It's okay. We'll be on the lookout, though. Yeah. I'm sure you guys will find out somehow, some way. I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure. <laughs> the way you're looking, is it in 10 minutes? No, it's not. <laughs> it's, not. No, it's not. It's not. We get off this, be, and it's already there. I right. need I need Messi. Yeah, exactly. I need Messi to uh, take a break a little bit, and then I can do yeah. something else. <laughs> well, Taylor, thank you for the time. We appreciate it. This is great, guys. Um, I appreciate it, and uh, I'm sure I'll be talking to you before the end of the year. Maybe it's that cup. Hey, play us. Your mouth to God's ears. Right. <laughs> yep, that would be awesome. We'll see you in the bins, too. Yep. yep. Awesome. See you, time. boys. All right. See you, Taylor. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks. That was Good awesome. Stuff. I hope you all just called out Pat McAfee on there. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> we got to send that to him. Yeah. <laughs> start a start a Twitter war. Nah. <laughs> Appreciate start a guy a that just is like, fight. you know what? I'm just gonna wear shorts. Hey yeah, man. I'm just gonna wear shorts. I think it's great. I think it's great. I think it's great because I'm all about comfort. And so I understand, like, especially in Atlanta. Screw the heat and humidity exactly. in this place. <laughs> wear a bathing suit every day. I won't go that far, but oh no, I do it. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it hits seventy degrees here in Ohio, so jeans are put away for the year. Once it happens once, I'm not they they don't come back out. So great times. Yeah, you know, one of the questions I wanted to ask him, but we ran out of time. We'll mm. get there. We'll get there. Oh no, I'm just yeah. Okay, go ahead. So Tom Bogert tweets today that there's a potential rule change in the middle of the season. And one, I don't like rule changes that happen in the middle of a season. I'm not a fan of it. But the the talk is is that they're going to be separating the U22 spots and not have them tied to the DP spot anymore. And anyone doesn't know the rule, I guess I could try and say it here. You, if or actually, one of you want to say this, I, I'm sure I'll probably screw this yeah, up. Yeah, if if you have uh, three DPs over the max ten or the tamp ceiling, you only get one U22 slot. Only way you get all three is obviously if you have. In fact, let me read it off. I wrote it down, so I'm just not BS. Look at this guy. Right. Yeah, Sydney, look at this so, guy. <laughs> His dream journal's got the U22 rules. No, <laughs> no um, if you, um, if all of your DPS are above the max threshold of tab, you only have one DP slot. Or um, if one of your DPS is a young DP or 24 and older, below the tab ceiling. Um, you're able to have three D three U twenty two players now under this new rule, regardless of how much your DPs get paid, um, those three spots will still be available to you. So that's why Atlanta had to loan out Franco Ibarra and Santi Sosa, just so they have that wiggle room for U twenty two players. So under the new rules, they could theoretically still be on this team at this current moment. That being said you want to free up those spots as quickly as possible. Now, if this rule comes to pass and Tom saying, you know, well, it's not a hundred percent at this time, but it's quote, unquote expected to pass um, the ownership vote according to him. So that's another wrinkle for teams. Another, it's a small step. It's not the biggest move for MLS, but it's a good step in the right direction. You're not really tied up the way you wear. You're not really having to, finagle things like in Lady United did to get themselves in compliance as far as U22 players are concerned. Uh, you now have that flexibility to have your three DPs over the max tab threshold if you so choose and then you can bring in one, two, three 
U22 players, they have that threshold, of course, that counts against the salary ch- budget charge, the cap, but you can pay them over that cap if you want. Um, so a little bit more flexibility. And I like it. I Again, it's not a huge step. It's a step, as Tom was tweeting out, I think. You know, or maybe not Tom, but I think it was uh, Jonathan Tannenwald from the Philadelphia Inquirer. It's a move setting up bigger moves in the future. Um, you don't want to take a bite of, out of the elephant, or sorry, you can't eat an elephant one bite. You just take a bite at a time, right? So it's the a step in the right window? direction. What I'm saying. I'm sorry. The whale and Ty- the whale in Tyler's window. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't take a bite. Eat the whale it. one bite. Somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is the move that should have happened in the off season, in my opinion. Right, I, I think it it needed to be done, and yes, yeah, Sydney, like you said, it's a step. It doesn't; it's not the be all end all to fix whatever complaints you know. Insert complaint here about MLS roster rules, but it's a step in the right direction because you want your U twenty twos to be low risk, potentially high reward, and. Right now, Atlanta has a pretty good one in Edwin Mosquera. But Atlanta has also missed on quite a few in the past. And so it just, for a lot of reasons, it frees up so many things for MLS rosters to do. Because you, you, you go out, you can find the talent that you might otherwise skip over. Like Garth Lagerway, the way that roster rules are, at least right now, I don't think he is super fond of the U22 designation because we know how he wants to go after his DP players. He wants guys that are in their prom, have been successful in a couple of leagues. You're not going to get a U22 player under yeah. those under those you know guidelines. Yeah. So now you you have the opportunity to go out and you don't risk as much finding some talent. You, you can now go look at the guys that Atlanta looked at over the years that maybe they paid too much money for and get them and not risk screwing yourself in the long run. And so I like it. I like it. I think it's a step in the right direction. Hopefully more comes because of it, but it's good. So correct me if I'm wrong, if this rule is good and Atlanta United sell Tiago Amada this summer, mm-hmm. right? There'll be no yes. designations of what player, what age, you can go sign anyone you want because there's really no young DP spot anymore then, right? Uh, I don't know about that. I think the young DP designation will still exist. That being said, you know, you still have all three DPs, uh, all three U22 slots, regardless of how much this new DP gets paid. They'll be filling Almada's spot. See, I don't I know the- about that, though, because if the teams that have one currently – can have three regular designated DP players, right? Correct. They have if a they, young DP player. If they're paid more than the uh, more than TAM, which is pretty much is all DPs, with right. some exceptions. So you wouldn't be able to, like, I, I think it would have to go away then because those teams that cho- chose that path have three normal DPs. So I think the young DP spot would go away. I, I don't think that would have to be. I, I you would think, at least in in my crazy thinking, um, and this obviously would help Atlanta United because then you're not stuck in this window where you. Because I think Garth wanted that, right? Like you said, Tyler, he, they don't. Mm-hmm. He, he's not a big fan of it. So maybe that's a situation where, yeah, you get rid of that position. I just can't see how teams have been following this rule for so long. Do it. If I'm not mistaken, I'm looking it up right now in real time. U22 players, their max budget charge is, I believe, yeah, 200K for 21 25, and 150K um, for 20 younger. And it mirrors, according to rules and regulations of MLS, it rules the budget charge of a young DP. So I wonder, Tommy, that's a good point. I wonder if that young DP designation goes away in the future based on that, because it's essentially the same amount of money against the cap as a young DP. So that sounds like that would be the case. We'll have to see um, if it does come out to that. But uh, then again, MLS rules and regulations 
are just so tangled up and complicated that you know <laughs> it could change tomorrow and none of this would be none the wiser i think so you know i, I it's think it's okay if you point. say stupid though say stupid because <laughs> I mean, they're stupid they are I <laughs> you think they say it. for it where it where it might come into play is you, you have sosa and ibotta off on loan but at the beginning of the season Boca Negra said that that didn't free up the spots. Now, I don't know yeah. if he was referring to the U22 spots or the, the I, I don't know, you know, because it seems like if they're on loan. Still counts against you. Yeah. I think. But it, but why? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the, that's, that's what I'm just talking about. MLS rules are just so tangled Stupid. up. and. Yeah. Because in theory, I mean, if stop if saying you, tangled up, it's stupid. <laughs> it's stupid. If you have stupid. guys on loan, yeah, stupid. Why are they counting against anything towards your roster, except for maybe what you're paying them? If if that's in the loan agreement, salary, whatever. But like, I don't know. Again, yes, tangled up, stupid, whatever you want to call it. I don't know either. It's dumb, but either that way, like whatever happens, episode. I think this is gonna it's gonna be good for the league. It'll be really good for Atlanta United. There's like some someone in Europe watching this right now and going idiots, all idiots. <laughs> I'm gonna go play football, manager. <laughs> they have a draft. Right. They have a playoffs. They have re-entry draft. <laughs> re-entry draft. <laughs> super draft. Yeah, super draft. Expansion draft. Holy crap! Yeah. <laughs> if you were born on in uh, a full moon draft, like right. Yeah, just, uh, God forbid you're born on a leap day. That's funny. <laughs> And don't That's forget the, the eclipse. Uh, the two bottom teams get to right. pick <laughs> one player from every, you know, one of the top teams. Jeez. <laughs> all right. Well, what times? That convert. If if you need a drink after listening to all that, we we apologize. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of math involved in there, subtracting three and and one and and ages. So we apologize. Carry the four. At least the three of us cannot fit into the U twenty two spot. We we know that. Yes, we're, we're, we're well that past we're that, that age. <laughs> All right, it's Orlando Hate Week. Hmm. What happened yesterday? Hey, we're we're Orlando after eight. loses. You can say what's what, that? What, I said we're after eight. You can say what OFYO stands for. There might be there might be a kid in there. There probably is. You know, there Carry might on. be a kid yeah. in the car. I played Christmas songs once in in a car with with children, and there was there was something in there that you shouldn't have when listening to kids. It tells things, secrets. So I got in trouble for that. So now I'm gonna, uh, wanna, I don't want to. I didn't know where that story. Yeah, but was it's going. it's F, it's F Orlando <laughs> Week, right? Yeah, fudge. Yeah, frick. frick As Orlando they say. week, but they lost to Tigres four to two. They did, and the game was at ten thirty at night, right? So it was past all our bedtimes. I I passed out. Right. Oh, God, Henry's just trying to turn me into a villain. Say it, just say <laughs> it. I oh, but it's because what I did to him last week. Oh, at the live show when I told him, "Do you want? Is Garth Lager going to be here, or not? Garth Lager way? Pineda going to be here Pineda. at the at the end of the season or not? Now I know what the thing is." And Ariel screw both Miami and Nashville. I'm Ariel's, you know, one of the reasons why I, I I've, I'm doing this with you guys. I podcasted with him a long time ago. I finally got yeah. to meet him uh, over the weekend, and that guy can drink. Oh, nice. that, guy can, that guy can party. <laughs> uh, he out drank me for every one tall beer I had. He had two. It was crazy. Uh, but you know anyways, who, you, know who wasn't, you know who wasn't partying? Huh? Was Orlando? Oh yeah. Oh man, look at this guy. <laughs> he had an energy drink. He's ready. He's ready today. They played at ten thirty at night. No. So, <laughs> do you stay up late and watch his game? No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> A very late game for them, right? Well, I was up so, late. I didn't watch the game, but I didn't. I was up late though. So you assume they probably traveled home. Probably yeah. just wanted to get home. Mm. Late night, they're getting home. They're recovering probably today. They don't have a ton of time. Now, the game being on Sunday does help them a little bit, right? They get an extra day, which is, is good for them. I wish they didn't have it. Um, a little bit different situation, right? New England went Wednesday to Saturday. They're going Tuesday to Sunday. So extra couple days in there. But we got to take advantage of this, right? Yeah, this is this is your, you know, there's always going to be a reason why you should win your games at home. But 
New England gave you a really good reason and Orlando is giving you a really good reason. So there's, again, no excuses. You're, you're playing at home. You're playing a team that's on short rest that just traveled from Mexico. They just got destroyed in Mexico. So, and it's a, it's a Derby. Like, we can get into the whole Derby conversation. I don't think Orlando is the Derby. I think Orlando is one of the Derbies. But it's still, there's still history there. Thank you, Joseph Martinez, mostly. Because other, other than that, it was all made up. But Joseph made it fun. Either way, it's a Derby. Whatever. And uh, the fans don't like each other. Say what you want about the teams and all that, but the fans just don't like each other. You got Orlando fans ripping seats out at Bobby Dodd. You got Darren Hills putting up billboards, you know, a quarter mile from <laughs> Exploria Stadium. There's there's history there. Well, Interim Company Stadium. No. Yeah, yeah, Interim Co. Stadium. Sorry. <laughs> and back then it was Exploria. Right. Back in the um, day. Well, but yeah, yeah Orlando I mean, fans get bath salt right before they like they get they hand them bath salt before they walk into the game and go get ready and that's how the crowd's pumped up. Hey, I, I, I'm pretty sure Orlando's like where where bath salts got created. That's where the zombies are. Yeah. All right, yeah, continue. I mean, you're not Sorry, wrong. you're not Just had to wrong. get that in there. <laughs> Please don't murder us, Orlando fans. <laughs> if you see us at the bins Be nice. on, on Saturday. Be nice to us. Not Sunday. Don't come on Sunday. Don't um, bring your bath salt. It's illegal to bring on airplanes. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I just, I, it's, you have to win this game. You have to win this game, plain and simple. Um, they they beat Atlanta at home last year, and it was really embarrassing, actually. Just like Charlotte beat Atlanta at home last year. Saving grace was Atlanta beat Charlotte at their home, and Atlanta drew Orlando at their home. Uh, thank you, Tyler Wolf, for that one. But yeah. that home game last year with Orlando was bad. It was really bad and you got to make up for it and say what we want about everything that's been happening with Orlando so far. I stand by what I've said. That they are a good team on paper. I still think they can come back out and play. So you can't turn off for this game. You just have to go into it. Focusing on yourself, which is what all the players and Pineda have been saying, control what you can control, but also just know that, Hey, there's going to be a little bit of an extra edge to it, and that's okay. Let's use it to motivate us and play better. They're going to be desperate, and yeah. like they're going to be a little bit relieved since Championship Cup is over. They can focus solely on um, the MLS season because, as we said, they're in this really shaky form. And, yeah, I mean, you can't lose to Orlando. They're maybe not your primary rival this year, maybe – you know, we talked about it earlier. Maybe some of it was, you know, fabricated and, you know, all that. But this is, oh, Darby. As, like you said, Tyler, this is a match that Orlando or Atlanta has to win to keep this kind of good vibes of Saturday's win going. I mean, you don't want to lose at home in any stretch of imagination. Certainly against Orlando City. Certainly against... Nashville starting against Charlotte. The team's kind of here in the southeast, that little southeast block of teams. You especially don't want to lose to them. And Orlando, if you lose to them, they're never going to let you hear the end of it. You need a team that comes out from the opening whistle. I mean, you've got to left this little starts twice now. It hurt you in Columbus. You were able to bounce back from that against New England and get a really comfortable win. I think Orlando is a team that can really make you pay if you don't get off to a good start. Um, they have players that can put you to the sword. Um, Torres, um, McGuire specifically, guys like them. Maybe they haven't found the net as often as you'd like if you're an Orlando fan, but one goal, one moment can really get them back on form. So, it's not going to be an easy match for Atlanta. Orlando won't be as rested, so that's a plus on Atlanta's side. But that doesn't mean they can just Atlanta can just go in and just think that what they did on Saturday is just going to work on Sunday, and they don't have to have the same level of preparation and the same level of focus that they need to win this match. They have to come out and really take the match to Orlando. You can't have mistakes like you had at the last goal or the goal that New England scored. 
just really for your confidence too, you need a clean sheet. And Pineda has just stressed, you know, we need clean sheets. We want clean sheets. So I would love a clean sheet as much as I would love a win on Sunday. And I would love goals too, for Atlanta, of course. First 15 minutes, score a goal. I know it's easier said than done, but, <laughs> you know, what, you know, you, you let New England hang around way too long in that game, right? They look tired, you know, to start that game. They, they just didn't look up to it, but they took advantage of some opportunities and almost scored a banger and it hit, it hit the post, it hit the crossbar. That's fine. But Mercedes-Benz Stadium, like Taylor Dwoman said, when that place gets rocking, it doesn't slow down, right? And we started feeling it a little bit last year because I, I, you know, I'm not at the games. You guys are all the time, but at least when you listen to it on TV, there's games where the, the fans sound great, and there's games where the, the fans sound crazy. And since the League's Cup, after League's Cup, when we got all all the offensive energy, right? Silva, Saba, Miamba. It's been different. It's been 100% different. Take advantage of it. Score early. And just keep pushing it, right? I think back to that Cincinnati game last year where they scored that goal against Cincinnati, and it was just offensive attack, attack. Unfortunately, they just couldn't get that second goal. They should have won that game, like 4-5-1. or five to one. Yeah. You know, that, that was a game where you just didn't take advantage of it. But that's what you need in this game. You need to score early, put... Orlando down, make them have to attack because that's one of the things too is they they had to come into the second New England had to come in and they had to score a goal in the second half. They were down. They couldn't just sit back and say, okay, let's just try to get a point here and go home and be happy. No. They had to score a goal. And Atlanta took advantage of it. And I knew as soon as they were up one nothing, it was over. I knew that they were going to be able to come in and start attacking. I didn't think we were going to get another handball, but I thought that, you know, they were going to be able to attack, open things up. And when you open things up, you look at that playoff game against Columbus in Atlanta when they were down, what happened? You had everyone having a ton of space. Almada just free open in the midfield. Got the wingers going everywhere. It was, that's what you do. And that's what you need to do at home. Specific, I I know this is just a a copy and paste for other teams, but it's not copy and paste when you look at Mercedes-Benz Stadium and the energy that it brings. Because, yeah, that crowd was a little bit quiet in the first half. I think they were just kind of nervous and were like, come on, let's get that goal. Let's let's get the beer flowing, right? And then people went, when Almada scores there, right at the end, what did they do at half? They went and grabbed the beer, came back up, and then it was a party, right? I was going to say, yeah, they grabbed more beer. And exactly wasted a lot of it in the second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so shout out real quick. So, you know, like down at the bottom where the players walk out, um, yep. out to this, out to the field. So they, they, they put the barriers up because the players are coming out. So my wife and I went to go run to the bathroom quick down there and they put the barrier up. So I couldn't get back to my seat because they were waiting for all oh. the players to come in. So my wife's over at the other side of the barrier, grabbing us a beer and the security guard. I'm like, he's like, sorry, sir. can't go by and closes the barrier right in front of me. But I'm like, but my beer is over on the other side. Shout out to the security guard. He went and went over to my wife, grabbed the beer and brought it back. And he got a standing ovation from oh everybody. Yeah. Shout oh out God. security that guard. Guy. Thank you. But then I finished there. it before the game, before the half even started. So right. <laughs> it was you didn't have a minuses. backup beer. Why did you not have a backup beer? I, I, I had to get one. I was a couple minutes late to the, the second half. <laughs> he already drank it. Yeah. <laughs> he drank his backup beer before his primary <laughs> beer. <laughs> uh, what a day. What 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 yeah. a weekend. Yeah. It was good. Well, it was good. And again, Shiv, uh that's okay. You you can watch. He's asking, did, did Taylor Twelman already come? Yeah, but thankfully these are recorded, and you can go back and watch yeah. them. If you're done. listening or watching afterwards, you can rewind and see the interview or hear the interview as yeah. well. Thank you, Internet. Yeah. All Thank right? you, YouTube. Right? Magical. All right. Magical place. Predictions. I haven't looked. I, I, 
I think we all got the. We got to start tracking these points. I'll go back and actually start the official tally. But we all picked a win. We all got yep. the win. So we all got that. I don't think anyone predicted four to one. Nope. That's okay. That's all right. That's a two one. That's okay. So what are we saying against Orlando? One of y'all go first. I got to go and look at what I said. <laughs> um, I think two nothing. I feel Orlando will be fatigued from Champions Cup. They'll kind of be, I, I think they'll be up for it. Certainly be up for it. But considering the form that they've been on, um, I don't know if they'll be able to have quite enough to beat Atlanta. I could eat those words by the end of Sunday night. But, you know, Atlanta, you know, half the talent, and Sam Jones was saying it himself, they have a plus starter in every position. And if they're on their game, they can wear you down with that attack. So I think they'll have to – this is a much better team than last year. I mean, we mentioned the loss to Orlando last season. Uh, This is a much better team than the one that lost that match. And, yeah, I think they'll come out on top to nothing. Um, You have to dominate this match. You have to take this match to Orlando and just, like I said, continue to add to their misery. This will be a team, maybe they're not super desperate, I don't think, because it's still early. They had Champions Cup to worry about, but they got shelled by Miami in Miami. They gave up a late winner they didn't against. Just show up for that game. Yeah, they just, <laughs> it was just like 11, you know, shells out there. Um, they gave up a deflating winner against Minnesota at home. Went to Tigress really got essentially played off the field, played off the pitch. So this is a team that really wants to get things right. They'll be desperate. And they know they have a lot of season ahead of them to really get things right, but they'll want to get things right sooner rather than later. So I am going to say, though, 2-0 Atlanta. I think they do win this match. I say Yakamakis and Almada score for Atlanta. Um... I don't have anything exciting to say. 3-1. Okay, fine. I said 3-1 as well. Yay, twinsies. <laughs> Yay. Atlanta, right? Huh? Atlanta, he's never, right? He's never going to pick them to oh, lose. That's why yeah. he's not going to win the prediction <laughs> challenge. Me? Yeah, uh, no. I'm not I'm not picking any other team to win. I don't know what you're talking about. No. Um, yeah, 3-1 Atlanta. I would love a clean sheet. I would love 3-0. The, the, I mean, Orlando has given up goals. Orlando scored some goals, too, but Dax said the other day, uh, or yesterday at training, they have to shut down Orlando because they're going to try to play up the middle. And we just got done talking with Taylor, and we've been talking about it for a couple of weeks now. You now have a defense. You have Slish there who's going to help mitigate that. You have Muyumba who's going to help mitigate that. Force them out wide where they're not as effective. And you're at home. You have the crowd behind you. Uh, I like 3-1. Henry said 17-0. I like it. We have a 17 nil. Yeah, 17 nil. Henry says, Ariel says 4 1. But it's the king on Twitter saying 3 nil Atlanta. As always, let us know on Twitter or X, Scars of Letter and Spikes, Instagram, Facebook, wherever, scarsandspikes.com. Let us know what your prediction is and we'll see if it comes to pass. I think we all predict a win, though, right? Yeah. You gotta win. Three Bubble staying points. in the chat. Pedro Gaese has flashes of being a great goalkeeper, and then sometimes he just looks like the worst in the league. Yeah. Um Let's hope for the letter on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't remember how to play. Right. <laughs> <into> Atlanta. <laughs> and to all 290 plus people that are watching this live right now, y'all are awesome. Thank you. We appreciate it. That's who I saw down there. Hi, Bryant. I knew I saw someone down by the stairs. There was a lot to drink at that point. That was <laughs> after the game. That was after the game. And I ran into, like, there was a guy last year at the game that, like, just kept trying to hand me tequila over and over and over. He's like, you want Did you tequila? Take it? You want tequila? No, I, no, I don't do tequila. I, I won't make the game <laughs> if I do tequila. But he just kept trying to hand me tequila. So I was like, oh, tequila guy. Terrible with names. 
faces i'm great at names no I, and i saw him i actually recognized him but yeah it's tequila guy i took a picture with him too you remember our names right sometimes <laughs> yeah beard one and beard two yeah <laughs> yeah touch beard all right well again we appreciate all of you um again patreon.com backslash scarves and spikes uh Got some great things coming up on there. Again, join the Discord. It's it's always an interesting place in there, um, especially during games. So uh, we'll be doing some watch-alongs here on Zoom. Get that together. And I thank you, Tyler, for trying to slowly do this. Would you like to announce? Oh, no, no. I was just being the, the model. I mean, I can... <laughs> no. No, go for you. Yeah. All right, cool. So Resurgence Scarf. Going to be giving it away on the show next week. Um, we will have the posts on Instagram and Twitter out pretty much as soon as we get done here. So keep an eye out on social media on Instagram. You just got to like it, comment with somebody, uh, somebody that you want to potentially win the scarf or you, and then Twitter, just retweet it and we will, uh, be giving it away live on the show next week. And remember, if you are a patron, then for every entry you do the normal way, you're going to get some other entries. So if you're not already a patron, go ahead on over to patreon.com slash scarves and spikes. But yes, it is this wonderful. I'm going to back up because it's a big freaking scarf. Um, look at this thing. It's like freaking five feet tall, man. Oh, God. <laughs> fan. Don't hit your, don't break your house. Ooh, the back <laughs> of it looks, looks like wallpaper. I know, it's pretty. Yeah, it's it's wallpaper. City, the spikes. Anyway. Yeah, come come win you a scarf. We'll have the there you go. Look, yeah, it's got, got a koozie. The, the crest for the city of Atlanta. Um, nice. Yeah, share the stuff, get it out there, and uh, maybe you'll be the one to win. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day at the game. Get crazy. We're green. Lots that's, of beer. That's why I wore green today. That's why I wore my green. I didn't wear my green. That's okay. All right, guys, I think that's it. Talk to you next week. Well, actually, we'll talk to you on Spaces. We will be there for Spaces. We were, we all were a little crazy after the game, so we will be back. Tyler is oh. muted. We can't hear him. I am so he sorry. Has said. <laughs> I was just waxing poetic about daylight savings time. <laughs> and yes... She, what were you saying? The scarf is available. I, I, the scarf is available. Team store website. It's it's available. You can get it. Um, no, I was I was complaining about daylight savings time. I'm not recovered yet. It ruined me. It really shafted me. This is the worst daylight savings time I've ever experienced. <laughs> I hate. Are it. you recovered? No, no, I'm not full. I'm not 100 percent yet. I'm really not. You'll get there. I'll get there eventually. I thought I really I thought it'd be at the airport at five. It was really four a.m. Yeah. No, you had it rough. I I just for some reason made my schedule to work the next morning like an idiot. <sighs> rookie move, sir. Bad. Rookie move. I know it was <laughs> so bad. All right. Well, thank you all. Are you gonna bet I'll on another hat trick? <laughs> I did already. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> five bucks five bucks again oh man we, we got the music starting over twice we gotta end this now see you guys All right, oh bye. we're back <laughs>